Yeah, I want to make uh, an important recommendation on Spooky 2. Um, now, this is something... Um, let me put it to you this way. This is something I'm using versus uh, by common sense. Now, this is a picture of the Ebola virus. And Spooky 2 generator, Rife generator, does have... Let me put it, alleged frequencies. Like, it's not even the Spooky 2 team that put these frequencies together. It's like, I don't know if they work. You know, that's the thing. I don't know, okay? But it does have a list for frequencies that would allegedly knock out Ebola. Now, I'm going to tell you something else, though, in this video. Because the instructions are to use uh, uh, fingernail clipping. And uh, I was working on my Jeep a little bit there. <laughs> it's a pain on my hand, but uh, fingernail clipping, right? And it has your DNA. Now, I'm going to state this. I could not believe this worked. I have a video out there that I killed fleas on the cat. I was trying to get these fleas off this cat with uh, everything, right? For like a few months. I ran 2750. I put the actual fleas in a DNA holder. It wasn't even this upgraded one with the magnet or a neodymium uh, magnet powered. It's, I don't know, it's like many times more strong than the original. I didn't run anything fancy. I just run a 50% duty cycle, no offset, 2750. Three days later, there wasn't even one flea. And I, and I stopped spraying for the things. I was like, whoa. So I got the idea that if you can get the actual pathogen sample that's in put it in a tape then put it in the DNA holder and with your DNA included but the actual pathogen sample in other words if you got Ebola it's in the, it's in the blood itself or whatever uh, whatever if you have a disease that's in the blood take some of the blood and you're gonna have to keep changing the blood sample every couple days but if the actual pathogen is in there and you actually have the mortal oscillatory rate for the actual pathogen it's going to that thing and the reason I'm saying this it's you know I have a hard time believing it but it worked on the fleas on a cat and I'm like this is the weirdest thing in the world it's not going to work on every flea in the world it just worked on the ones that were like relatives of the ones that it took five fleas off the cat and I was like that thing he don't have any man he's they've been gone for you know months now but the thing is the other thing is say for instance you know you should evaluate all this stuff with a doctor I'm not saying rely on this stuff at all period but say for instance the doctor does a biopsy and he says you got this specific type of cancer now he's gonna tell you what to, he or she is gonna tell you what to do um it might be good to ask them, hey, I want to try this crazy thing, you know, uh, remote. <laughs> Look at you like, go ahead, you know, it makes you feel better, right? That's what they'll probably say, you know, it makes you feel better, go ahead. Um, you put the biopsy sample of, say, the cancer, whatever it is, and put it in a DNA holder. Ask your doctor exactly what type of cancer it is, because when you look up in Spooky 2 on the frequency list, there's a hell of a lot of different cancers and they require different frequencies. They're not all the same one. But I'm going to state this where I really start. This is like so simple, Common Sense 101. Um, you know, if it works, if you can take the actual pathogen and quantum entanglement, you know, remotely create a frequency in the actual pathogen here, which is going to happen to the actual pathogen, versus your own DNA, but the actual pathogen, well, what's going to happen to the pathogen? Isn't it going to get really destroyed a lot faster? You would think so, wouldn't it? The problem is you're probably going to have to keep changing these samples more often. It's probably only going to last you two or three days. But then again, if you can take that for two days and really hammer that thing, that's my approach if I was going to use this on Ebola. That would be my personal approach. I would. I don't know if these frequencies are correct, but I know some of the other frequencies in here for other issues are correct. And you know, I I did some real digging in where you <laughs> you know the dark depths of the internet and all this kind of stuff uh, that's not commonly well known, but they are correct. It's not. They're not. They're not really out there in the public much. 
some of these frequencies are a hell of a lot better than other ones. That's what I'm going to say. But the thing is, if you could actually take the pathogen itself and put it in DNA, maybe it's only going to last a couple days. But then again, that frequency is going to be transmitted directly to the pathogen. It's not going to be like your, your fingernail clipping where it's going to your DNA. You want that frequency going directly to that pathogen. So... I think that might be a far, 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 far more effective method. It's just that the disadvantage is, like I said again, that sample is not going to last that long in here. Like if you're using a blood sample, you're going to have to change it every two days. But say, for instance, you have a disease that's in the blood, or it's partly in the blood, like Ebola would partly be in the blood, that would be my method. I would use the fingernail neck clippings, and I'd use the blood every two days. But if you're running this remote thing and it does work, if it works like the way I suspect, highly suspect, um, it's going to wipe it out. But, you know, only a doctor is going to be able to evaluate that. But I'm putting here um, plain old uh, mechanic uh, redneck sense here. That's what it takes, right? You know, it's like, I'm not putting $5 fancy or $50, $500 words out here. I can, but I'm not. But it's too common sense. If this is actually sending uh, a frequency, if you put your DNA in here, and it goes to your, you, you transmit a frequency to your DNA in the holder, and it goes to your DNA, and that supposedly knocks out the microbe, what happens if you put the actual microbe in there, and transmit the frequency. Would it not directly vibrate the microbe with the mortal oscillatory rate? Now this thing is definitely plenty accurate enough. It's just a matter of do we have the right frequencies? Now in many cases we do because we also have the original right frequencies too. Many of them. Many of them are actually known. And this thing is accurate enough to do the job. But you know, I have to say it's experimental, but I want to state that that's probably a far, far more powerful method. You want to use the fingernail clipping and a sample of the microbe at the same time. That's what I would do. It makes too much sense if you think about it. And what convinced me was I did not use a cat claw or something when I used to try to zap the frequencies on a cat. cat. I used the actual fleas, <laughs> and they were gone, man. They were gone everywhere. They were just, three days later, they were just gone, man. And uh, I don't want to say where I got that frequency from, but uh, he, he is an expert in the Rife community for some quite some time. He's not associated with Spooky 2 or anything, but uh, he's uh, he knows some stuff, man. I'm, I'm sure of it. So I feel confident that this is one of my main weapons, too against any type of disease and uh, some powerful stuff man it depends on how you apply it it's not going to be a matter of just the type of wave or harmonics and even you know the Hoyland harmonic or I mean those things are great and spikes but it's a matter of I'm thinking if you take the if you can have the actual microbe in that DNA holder I mean I took out those cat fleas with um, Plain square wave, the old remote, plain simple settings, nothing special. The first day I wasn't even spraying for fleas anymore. They were like, I could see they were visibly gone. The second day they were almost gone. Third day they were gone. And they never came back. So, anyway, I just want to put this advice out here for this because um, it's just my own common sense. And you know what? Simple common sense goes a long way instead of $50 words, $500 words. And you know what? I don't have any initials after my names. That's usually a big plus because I never trust people with initials after their names. Usually they're the biggest, uh, they're looking for some kind of angle. Uh, not me, man. I'm just here to help people once in a while. But then again, I keep some of my cards to myself too. Definitely because I know a lot more than I actually put out on here. And as always, Putin the cat is always here to help me with something. See, he's helping he's helping me transmit the remote DNA holder, right, buddy? Man, you're my little buddy, man. You know that? <laughs>
I think you're like half dog, man. You're freaking so dedicated. It's amazing. You always help me with something. You know when I'm when I'm trying to make that remote work, you're just gonna lay on it and make it work better, right? You're probably transmitting it through the your your purring, right? Is that what it is? You're adding a frequency to it. You're a great little cat, man. You know that. We're gonna make you live to be 200 years old, right? You're gonna be an Illuminati cat. Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs>